Hello and welcome to Amal Conversa. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Marissa. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for being here. Today we have a very, very, very special guest. And I just need to add this because I didn't add this last week. And I know it's going to be a little bit of a shock for everyone. But Amal Conversa is going to take a break. And we are celebrating today our 50th episode. I was going to say 50th anniversary. <laughs> our 50th episode, which is crazy. Like I That's a big even, accomplishment. Yeah, I don't even know where the time has gone. I don't even know. How did I get to 50? How did I get to 5-0? I don't even know. So, so today, you mean to say that uh, today is your your last one for a little bit? I'm, I'm your... Yes, 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 yes. So it's awesome. go we're going to take a break, but we're still going to have the other programs on Palma Media. We have Nancy's program, A Coming Yada. We have Francesca's program, Vibe Mucheska. Nelson has other things up his sleeve for you guys. So you guys will be in great, great hands. But today I'm very excited to talk to Paul Machado. He not only is Michael Keegan, am I saying his name right? Michael Keegan's so long lost that. twin brother, no. uh, AKA Batman, <laughs> but he's also the pumpkin man. Yeah, so Paul Machado Pumpkins, and you can check him out on YouTube. I believe it is Paul Machado Pumpkins, right? On your yeah, right. Yes. So the way that me and Paulo met each other was through Nelson. And we got in touch with each other because I wanted to work on a music video project. So I consulted with Nelson and I said, hey, Nelson, do you know any brilliant videographers around the area? I was fresh to Hillmar and he said, yes, absolutely. I know Paulo Machado. So then we started working on Alfama and Alfama is my first single. It's available on all major music streaming platforms. And we did an official music video together that is found on his YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, on his Facebook. And I think that's it. But yeah, so whenever- Instagram. You, yeah, and Instagram, and Instagram. So whenever you guys have a free chance, please go ahead and check out Alfama. It is amazing. It is on Paulo's Paulo Machado video and photography. Did I say that right? Or photography? Paula Machado, photography and video. Photography and video. Photography first. It's alphabetical, people. So, yes, I will let Paulo talk a little bit because when I found out he was like this, this master pumpkin man, A, I had to wear orange today for my conversa. But B, I, I was like in shock. My face was probably with my mouth open. I don't even know. I don't even know how a fly didn't get in there. But <laughs> honestly, I was like, oh, when do you meet somebody that's like amazing at carving pumpkins? That, that is like the talent that no one really has. So please, can you explain how this all came about? Because it's, it very much boggled my mind. Because like I said, you, you cannot judge a book by its cover. You never know what a person can do, is capable of, the knowledge they have. I mean, it just blows my mind. So go ahead, I'll give you the floor. I mean, I could talk about that all day. Uh, okay, I think it all started with my grandmother, my, uh, on my dad's side. Uh, she, she's very talented, a musician. She used to play and go uh, to villages and, and play guitar. She was a mean guitar player and singer. What? Are you and, kidding? Uh, and that's where, where, where in Portugal, uh, Azores, St. George, um, uh, from Fajan's dreams. That's, uh, where my village, that's where I'm from. Um, and so she used to go all over the St. George to, to play, uh, music and, uh, sing. I, I, I didn't know that part of my grandmother, um, until I met her. Shoot. I was 12 years old when I met her because, uh, wow. when I was born, she was here in the United States and I was oh, wow. there. But I didn't know this for many years after that. So she come from that type of talent. And then my dad took up singing as well. And he was, he, he loves to sing. And he used to go to, from festa to festa. I'm learning more things today. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. Uh, he was, he's, he's known for that. And, and there too, the, the original, uh, original uh, Balj, I don't know how you say it, but that's what he used to do and sing. Um, so 
there's a bit of talent right there. And then my mom, on my mom's side, um, she used to, uh, to sit, uh, kolshers, which, uh, wow. make the kolshers by hand. And, um, oh and God. she, you know, uh, um, she used to take the whole from the beginning with the wool to the, the point to get the, the, the string and, and oh. dye it and make oh the God. kolshers you know and everything from beginning to end yes and my mom uh, and i i watched my mom make uh these to pitch with the islands the there all the islands with different colors and and so that piqued my interest as far as uh starting the the drawing process um so from a very early age I, I would draw and sketch i was very uh i was very interested in learning how to draw uh, but never got very serious into it. But the uh, uh, first chance I got when I went to school was to get into art school. Um, and I don't know where, though. Uh, I know that wood came into play there. And uh, wood was one thing that I wanted to be able to sculpt wood. Oh, wow. in, a in Azores, I didn't have the means there, uh, nor the tools. So I never got into it very much. But that was one thing from a very young age that I wanted to sculpt some wood. Oh, wow. Interesting. Um, but, you know, never got into it. I came to the United States in 89. I was 12 years old. 89. So yeah. fine. <laughs> Miss Thang over here arrived. Uh-huh. And so I came to, I, came, I landed in Half Moon Bay. Oh and my as God. you all I know, Half Moon Bay, Bay is like the, the, the capital of the pumpkin, pumpkin. right? Yeah. Right. So, so my very first uh, encounter with a pumpkin carving was there in in uh, in Half Moon Bay shortly after Perfect I arrived. Life. Perfect. Yeah. Life. So, as you can see, there's this story that kind of leads that way. Progression. <clears throat> yeah. Progression. But, shoot, it was many years after that that I realized that I, I could do that, where I could even try to carve a pumpkin. So one day I was messing with the kids and you know every every year you cut the pumpkin you know with the triangle eyes and the teeth and everything so i'm doing that and one the the year prior that i tried anything um i was like no there's got to be a better way to do this and so i started looking into tools and stuff like that and seeing how people were doing it and it i did find it. yeah and I did find a I did find an artist on YouTube. Uh, his uh, name is uh, Ray Villafane, a uh, very popular pumpkin yeah, carver. And he's talking about the tools he's using and stuff like that. And so then, um, the following year, I you know I bought some cheap tools, but they were better than what I had before. Yeah. And that's and that my very first one was a big a big success at home and. And people I showed on Facebook and everything, people were like, wow, you got to do this more often. How long have you been carving? I was like, this is my first year. Oh, and so, and there. The first year. Out. Wow. Yeah. So I, start, I wish I could show you here my first pumpkin, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a, a funky pumpkin. What was the character? What was, what was it? Um, I, it's just a face. I didn't have anything in mind. I just created off of what I thought a face would look like and. And when, uh -huh. what year was this that you said that all, that all started? Uh, 2000, it's either thir 2013 or 2014. I, I'm kind of like fogged up right there. That's, hey, that's the so year. that's like, we're talking not very pretty long recent, ago. Pretty recent, yeah. right? Yeah. So what are some of the things or some of the events or even maybe some of the accomplishments that you've done or, you know, that you've already had the pleasure of, you know, encountering with these pumpkins. So what have you done or where have you been? I know you've done a show. Yeah. If I'm not wrong, right? Yes. So, Can you so a little bit what pumpkins have done for you as far as like exposure. So what, what, uh, what got me, what, and it was by pure accident. I, I made a video of like a fast, uh, paste uh, fast forward type video of me carving uh, one pumpkin. Yes. And my YouTube channel was just, I had stupid videos on there, just putting stuff. I didn't have anything uh, great. I must yeah. interrupt you. And another thing that I found out about Paulo was when I first met him, was I had no idea that his YouTube has like seven point something, what? Thousand. Seven point, uh, seven point something thousand followers. 
Yeah. I have like 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But anyways, continue to follow. But that was, that was that. I mean, I, I didn't, I had nothing going on as far as thinking that, you know, I was going to be any sort of successful at all on YouTube, but for just to put ideas out there. And one thing was to watch me carve. This is the following year after I found out I could carve and I made this video, just fast forward it and put some stupid music on there. Really fast music, really loud. I don't know. I don't know how many, why I even got um, that kicked off. And everybody YouTube. loved it. And there you yeah. Know. I mean, I couldn't believe it in, in like, in less than a month, I had over a hundred thousand views and it was like crazy. And month, that, yeah. Views? When did you post this? Did you post it around October? It was prior to, yeah, I either at the beginning of October or at the, be, at the end of September. I'm so curious to know what your hashtags were. It, it was like, I, yeah, I had a hundred overall. I had, a, I think, I believe it ended up being like 180,000 views on that that's, video by the end of the month. That's really impressive. The most I've ever done in a month was like 20,000 views. <laughs> and I had to work for those 20,000. Yeah, views. I didn't know. I didn't do anything. I didn't put hashtags. I didn't put nothing. I just put it out there, made a pumpkin carving and it and took off. Thing, my views were on Facebook, which are easier to get than on YouTube. YouTube yeah. views are so, so hard. So if yeah. you get 180,000 views in a month, I mean, you deserve an award to- Not only that, it also <laughs> paid. It also paid because I had a- Oh, I had that's a, right. I had the uh, AdSense and so it just paid I don't know. It was, I don't know if it, what it was, but I think it was a hundred and a few bucks. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, nice. and, and I got from that, I got the a hundred, uh, over shoot over a hundred subscribers from that video alone. So that, <laughs> that launched me, the, my YouTube channel, that's what launched it. And from then on, it's been just growing. Uh, from don't there. forget to mention the other video <laughs> which is the most popular video <laughs> please say it please tell the people but it's a really stupid video please though. tell the people <laughs> uh so okay so so meanwhile so in between <laughs> carving i had to come up with other ideas so yeah. one morning before i went to work using my my iphone i recorded at me uh cooking oatmeal <laughs> Yes, you heard and, it. Oatmeal. And, and that video today has over uh, 2.2 million views, and uh, and okay. I'm like, uh, two. It has over 2.2 million views. <laughs> wow, Jesus! Another award for the man. Somebody get this man an award. <laughs> Jeez Louise! So but crazy. it's the craziest video. It's so simple. It was filmed on the iPhone, and um, and so it was. Simple. Basically making the making the the uh, oatmeal the, with the instructions from the box. That's all I did. Add the water. And don't the be modest. That's the <laughs> best way to make the oatmeal, you guys. The <laughs> it, only way. It really is. To me, it is. I mean, till today, I still this morning I, I cooked it just the, exactly the way I I cooked it. I showed it in the video. So I've been That's doing. The that thing. You could probably yeah. cook the papas with your eyes closed now. But that video, that video has given me nearly six thousand dollars over oh, the years. Oh well, we just love oatmeal, don't we? <laughs> Jeez, I, I try to get a sponsorship from oatmeal, but they're like, "No, nah, that's shitty video." <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you're like this shitty video, six thousand dollars, whatever. Oh my gosh, it, Paolo. it was good. It was and then you also good. did like it was like USA in the morning or daily. Oh or uh, yeah, I I've been. It's been now three years in a row. I've been uh, uh, showcased in uh, years, Good yeah. Good uh, or Good Day Sacramento. There we go. Good Day Sacramento. So yeah, they contact is... me. There's a lady there that I guess likes me. And she she contacts me. And she I says, guess she does like you. There you <laughs> not 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 for anything else other than she likes my carvings. It maybe. must be the Michael Keaton. Uh, no, no. The, the Batman. Okay, fine. You don't want to be called Batman. You can be called Beetlejuice. You want to be called Beetlejuice? <laughs> yeah, it's looking, it's looking a lot more like him now. Yes, and I like how you decorated the house. I mean, Thank you. today is our 50th episode and it is Halloween. Today is Halloween for us. So yeah. we're going to be talking a little bit more about pumpkins. 
So what was your favorite pumpkin that you've carved to date? If you can recall. I have several, but the one that always pops in my mind is the, the one that, um, uh, in fact, the pictures that I have, it's, it's two of them next to each other. One looks like a young, smiley child, and the other one looks like a old, grizzly lady. All, um, oh. all uh, There's all these wrinkles and stuff like that, and to me, that was, that's my favorite. I think I, I, this was a random picture I pulled out of the, the internet, and I, I, I kind of wanted to capture the, the essence of that picture on the pumpkin. I was trying to see if I could do it. And I felt like I did. I mean, I feel I like, like I did. I it doesn't mean that it didn't. I saw yeah. this pumpkin. Yeah. That's and great. I, it's one of my favorite. Yes, for sure. That is very cool. That is very cool. And you've actually had to do like live carving. So you've, you've done like events where they give you a pumpkin and they're like, hey, dude, do whatever you want to it. So is it yes. kind of weird when you're under pressure? Is it, It's like no. a different vibe than when you're at home, right? Or it's the same? It, it is uh, like for TV, it's a little harder because there's pressure there because they only give you sometimes less than an hour to get the pumpkin carved. And, and for me to carve a pumpkin with all the details that you're used to seeing, yeah. it takes any time between two to four hours. So, wow. so it, it puts me uh, in, uh, in a different uh, uh, position where I do carve a little quicker and I don't mind the pressure. It's just, um, I just don't put in as many details as I would on a, a regular, um, on the regular pumpkin that I do at home. Um, sure. but, uh, but live par pumpkin carving live, I take my time. Uh, the children love to come and touch the pumpkins and it's, Aww. it's just, it's a, it's a good feeling and everybody comes and they want to take pictures with me. And, um, yeah, it's, it, I, I love it. I actually prefer doing it live than I do it by myself because by myself, you know, you just, <laughs> you're just there. I do go yeah. into this zone where I, I don't, I, everything, I forget about everything. And that's all I do is just think about that. And, and there's a feel to it. Um, you know, there's this zone that you go into and, and you feel as you start carving and take away a little bit by little bit. And, and there's just this feeling that, um, you're lost in it. And, and it, it, I allow the pumpkin to talk. I, I hate to say that, that's cliche, but it, it, it basically does speak to me um, on how it's gonna be carved because each pumpkin is different. The, 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 the meat of the pumpkin is different. Uh, I've had pumpkins that are great to be carved and I had car pumpkins that sucked to be carved. Yeah. They are very stringy and you can't get too deep on it. So those I need to be careful and, and they speak to me it's like, yeah, you can't get as much detail on this as you would on another pumpkin. So yeah. I let the process go. I don't let it get too stressed out because then, you know, I lose, uh, it's not fun after that. So that's pretty cool that you're able to do that because I feel like, I mean, I'm going to talk for myself now. I feel like once we, we are good at something and we like something, we try to continue to get better and sharpen our skills and whatever. But then once we do that, we sometimes uh, can be too critical and then we lose the fun. Like absolutely. You lose the fun completely. So um, I don't know how you've managed this time, this whole from 2013 to 2021 to, to not do that to yourself because I feel like it's very easy to do that. Because yeah. you want to strive uh, for not perfection, but you want to strive for a up a uphill thing where you just keep improving and keep getting better and keep you know um, crushing the goals and hey, I want to make a Frankenstein. Okay, I did that. Now I got to keep going. But I feel like once we reach that certain point, like maybe I don't know five six year mark, uh, we can be begin to to be very critical and it's not fun. So it's interesting how you've maintained the, um, the lightness of it all. You've maintained just, hey, it's just a pumpkin. Just have fun. It's not a big deal. Um, if it comes out good, it comes out good. If it comes out bad, it comes out bad. Try another one. Yeah. So that's a pretty good um, philosophy. Uh, how, what, what can you tell the listeners on how to maintain that and not to get 
lost or, or critique yourself too much? Like, how do we keep the fun is what I'm trying to tell you. Like, how do we keep yeah. the fun? Over these years now, I have, I've had, I've, I've had a bit of a, uh, where, you know, certain years, you know, either you're, you don't feel it and you don't, it's not like you're, you're like, oh, I'm losing it. And, and, you know, I, I need to continue creating. And I, fo I, I find that that, that process of trying to doing against what your body is feeling it, it kills it right that's so what, what happens exactly so yeah. so what i do when when i feel like slowing down i do like this year hasn't been one of those years that i'm um uh wanting to jump into it uh, i've had a um a big year in my um, in in just my side career the photography this year has been uh really really good a big jump from what it was last year yeah. including your video your video was an amazing project to be part of and um and and, and so that all that you know i can't you know do everything all at once so i sure. have to Just put to priorities where yes so what i do is i back off a little bit and that's just for my my own sanity. I back off of it. I let myself feel that urge to 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 do it again. And this year may be a slower year as far as carving pumpkins, but I know that that I, it, it comes in seasons for me, and uh, it'll come you know full of fire uh, next year. One of my slower years led to my my most successful years, which I carved and made tons of videos that year it was after a slow year where i kind of backed off a little bit i let the process go but then the next year i came back in fire so that's sure. what i allowed myself to do you are wise beyond your years because i think that's literally the piece of the puzzle he's basically saying don't force yourself to do it do it when you want do it when you feel just like another example my father he started to paint during the quarantine and he painted every single day and he made, I don't know, like 400 or even more. I don't even know. Seen beautiful. some of those paintings and beautiful. Yes. They're beautiful he, paintings. Thank you. And he made beautiful paintings. Now he, t he says, if he tries to do it, he can't do it. And I think it's because of what you just said. He's trying to force himself to do it. Mm -hmm. But at the time when we we're doing the pandemic and we were all at home and he probably was going through a depression. He didn't know what to do. So he just started something new. And it was exciting for him, like learning techniques, learning the paints, learning the brushes. He feels like maybe he already learned everything so quickly. And then now, I mean, like literally he says he's tried to do it. And it was as if it was a fluke, as if like this weird thing overcame him and he could do it then, but he can't do it now. Yeah. But I think it's literally because you hit the nail on the head. He, am, he is not able to do it now because he's forcing himself. He's putting the, the pressure on himself. He's putting the stress on himself. He's taking away the fun because in the beginning it was fun because he was discovering it all. And yeah. I think he's taking away the fun because now he has like, not an expectation, but now people see his stuff they know it's so good and like i think that's in the back of his head like the next one gotta be really good you know so he's, got, I, he's built his own expectations that he thinks he can't meet yeah and i honestly i mean i can kind of see that in me myself as well so that's why this is a very interesting conversation here because we're talking about pumpkins but i'm relating it to my life as well like singing is very fun and singing is very amazing this year has been the most craziest year for, for singing, and I am extremely blessed. I am just not used to the flow yet. You know what I mean? I'm not, this, this has been like a whirlwind of things. <laughs> so I haven't even had a chance to stop and actually think about all the things that have occurred this year, because it's just literally been one thing after another and another and another. So I'm very, very fortunate. I'm excited for the next year and I'm excited for, for the future of what's to come. Um, but I'm going to take this advice that you told me that if I don't feel it, take a little break, then come back. Just like you said, like your slowest year, then you came back and it was like your busiest year. Yeah. Yeah. Same kind of thing here. So I'm going to do exactly what you say. Just 
listen to my body and listen to my heart, listen to my mind and go to flow. So yeah. Paulo, this has been such an amazing conversation with you. We have a few more minutes. So before I go ahead and chat everyone's ear off, is there any last things you would like to tell the listeners of Ma Conversa, where they can find your content or anything that you would like to share with them, if they can view your website or something, anything you would like to say? Yeah. Um, well, uh, I think I think people are going to see a lot more of my work going forward. I think that um, it is expanding well, and uh, I've I've uh, partnered with a couple good people like yourself and that has helped quite a bit <clears throat> and one thing that i can say about that is this year has been a, a yes year for me uh there's yes. been a, me too there's a, i said yes to everything <laughs> yeah it, it was a weird thing it, it was something that um you know you've we all seen the jim carrey's uh, yes movie yes man or whatever it is it's called yes and um and i felt this year in the back of my mind that movie kept coming up and people kept asking me for things that I hadn't done before, like shooting a festa, for example, I had never done that. And Oh my and God. The, yes. And tell them that you took the like legendary photo. Yes. The, the one of uh, the, the, the queen releasing the, uh, the dove, that was, uh, that was one of my, Modesto most was good. I, the Modesto yeah. Espiritu Santo was really yeah. nice. And so I, you know, in that, I, to me, that, that picture really is the pinnacle of, of this year it's been a yeah. yes year you know certain projects I I, I I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out never did them and just yes and accepting it and figuring out as we went and um and and i i mean i've this year to me has been just a, an amazing year as far as my growth personal growth uh my um my professional growth and also my 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 um, my growth in my abilities, um, yes. both photo, video. Uh, I can't say much about carving because I haven't even carved a pumpkin this year yet. Go with uh, the flow, but dude. it will come. It will come. Yes. Um, but what I would like to say when when it comes to if if people want to check me out and and know a little bit more about me, I do have uh, my personal website. Um, it's a photo website, but it does, it does have my pumpkins in there. I combined, um, I had two pump, uh, websites. It was, I found that it was too much to manage. Yeah. So I do have my pumpkin, uh, website merged in there. If you go to Paula Machado photography, uh, dot com, you'll have the photos and videos that I do. And, and then the connections to all my social media from, uh, Facebook to Instagram and to YouTube. Uh, but also you'll see on the tabs, you'll see the Paul Machado pumpkins site where you can see, check out my very first pumpkin that I carved um, to all the, the pumpkin videos that I have. It links it uh, straight over or it's embedded, but it's linked through uh, YouTube. Um, and then from there, if you want to be brave enough to go check out my oatmeal video, go ahead and do that. I am truly embarrassed about it. But at the same time, I'm truly blessed about it that it's given me so many, so many people to watch the stuff that I do. So, uh, and it's a cool story to say. I just have to say it's cool to say that little old me with my iPhone made a video that has got 2.2 million views on it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's about know. it. Oh my gosh. Well, that is amazing. Now I think I need to make a video on my Google phone of me showing you guys how to make a hot pocket in the microwave. No, no, no. It has to be something. <laughs> it's got to be something Portuguese. Like, I don't know how to, how to make oh, you gotta, you gotta do something like so easy that you read the instruction off of the yeah. box and you make it and you get 20 million views. <laughs> I mean, you get 200 million views whatever you know whatever it, it is <laughs> it just goes um, to show you that it doesn't take much it's just a matter of where it's positioned somehow yes it just happens you know that that is amazing that that happened and honestly i agree this year was the year that maybe not only you not only me but a lot of us we said yes because we know what it's like to have nothing we came from a year 
that literally everything was taken away from us. So now we see some light at the end of the tunnel. We want to do everything because we just don't know if and when that will happen again. Mm -hmm. So we feel like we got to do everything now and accomplish all these goals because, you know, we just don't know if we're going to get another chance. Yeah. And I feel like that's definitely what the pandemic has shown us as well, because we continue to lose people on a daily, not, not only from the pandemic, but just depression, a bunch of other stuff that happens. And I think that's, that also gives us the push to do more because like, Hey, what if today's your last day and you didn't get to do X, Y, and Z, you know? So it's kind of like, take advantage of your life. Don't say, okay, next year I'm going to do this. Why? If you can do it now, then figure it out and do it now. Just like the music video. That music video that we did together was a totally like a whirlwind of, I mean, I want to say it was like, like a process on crack type of a thing, right? But I mean, you do good under pressure. I do good under pressure. We were just a very good team together. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better videographer, honestly. And I know, I know a few and I love them all, but I felt like, I mean, this was meant to happen for some reason, shape or form. I mean, if you guys haven't checked out Althama, it's on YouTube, Paulo Machado, Photography and Video, or Marisa Savahosha, Badishta is on YouTube and also on Facebook on Paulo Machado, Photography and Video, Facebook. So thank you again, Paulo, for being here on Amal Conversa. I literally, I mean, this is kind of bittersweet here. I mean, this is the last Amal Conversa. I mean, and I had Paulo, so I feel very happy for the choice. And I feel very happy that we got to talk about Halloween because Halloween is literally one of my favorite holidays. And then I see what you're doing here. And it looks like you're ready for December as well. So it's, it's winter coverage. It's just, I, it's just I like it. Be I am, nice and warm. And I am all about it. I am all about it. Well, thank you again. Appreciate you and can't wait to work on another project with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I really, truly appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.